Hello, welcome back to the We Are City channel where we start a new season here on the FIFA 23 career on Manchester City with a new manager. It is Maurizio Pochettino, ex Spurs and PSG man, ex Southampton manager as well, takes over here at Manchester City to try and take over from Guardiola's reign and make things, well, as good if not better. Can we better season four? I don't think so. Pochettino has signed a three-year deal with the club. Now, one thing we have started the whole series with is giving new contracts to some of our outstanding performers. Josh Kogvardeval, one of those. At his age and his rating already, 24 years of age, 89 rated, he is going to be a mainstay in Maurizio Pochettino's side. And one thing you must notice and one thing I can't change is Pep Guardiola there being the man on the graphics. So Pep Guardiola will be doing all the negotiations for the team still. Whether we say perhaps he's director of football, maybe we say Pep Guardiola takes over as director of football of the club, he decides to take a more of a boardroom role and negotiate with getting players to Manchester City for a few seasons. I don't know whether that is a good narrative to go with this series, but Pep Guardiola there will be in negotiations. We, we can't change that. Dominic Soboslai, he gets a new contract here at the club because he's been another fantastic player, the Hungarian, pretty much the Kevin De Bruyne replacement. And look at this, Kaiki now 80 rated at 23 years of age. He has been a real surprise in the series, hasn't he? He has he's come up from absolutely nowhere. Did not expect him to be as good as he has been. And he has signed a new deal. Same for Luke Mbete. We want to use a good, strong English core here for Maurizio Pochettino. That is something he, he works on, isn't it? He wants to use the young players from the youth system. He did that at Spurs, brought through the youth players and brought through young English players as well. And that is going to be one of the key elements to the Maurizio Pochettino here at, here at Manchester City. Now, we've sold Lucas Ferreira. He has joined Marseille for 20 million. Came through our youth system, so we made a big profit on him. An A rating for that one, which is really going to mean to sell him for that sort of money is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? And more negotiations now because we look to obviously bring in CFG signing still. We've done that throughout this series, haven't we? Brought in players that we think could be good for the future. If not, we sell them on for profit and we'll continue to do that. And uh, Tivon Gray came in at a, a very low deal. Now we're going to try and swap Tivon Gray and a bit of money for this man, Simo from Espanyol. Looks a good young centre, about 21 years of age. Uh, you think Luke Mbete is 78 rated at 22. Simo's a little bit behind in his development. But Luke Mbete is one of the exciting players in our team. And we negotiated a while with Espanyol, who were very difficult to negotiate with. They saw in the young centre-back a good player. And I want to bring him in for this season, loan him out, and then perhaps use him in the future if he develops into the player we want him to be. If not, we will sell him for profit. And it's just about trying to identify real high-quality players, isn't it? That is what Manchester City have done in real life, haven't they? That is what they've done. And they really drove a hard bargain here. Drove a really hard bargain, did Espanyol. 18% sell-on clause in Simo's deal and a 1 million deal plus Tivan Gray. We agreed a deal for the Spaniard. We've got lots of players on our list of players to sign. But Simo was the one, the first one that we identified as a player for the future in this team. A three-year deal. We wanted a four-year deal for the Spaniard. And we're going to obviously, like I said, loan him out. Get him out on loan and see how he does out on loan. Playing for maybe back to La Liga where he can develop as a player. We just want him on the books to say he's our player and we can use him in the future. There is some players that perhaps come back this season or certainly next season that I've got my eye on. And Pochettino has got his eye on as a player ready to play for Manchester City supposedly next season. We're not quite sure. We'd have to obviously move on bigger players to do that. But Simo is the one that arrives at Manchester City now, the young Spaniard. And we get an A, surely, for him. 1 million plus Tivon Gray. That has got to be an A rating for the young Spaniard, doesn't it? Who signs. And he is the first signing of the Pochettino era. And obviously not a first-team signing, but certainly a signing for the team for the future. And that is what this whole series is going to be about over the next three seasons. So another player we're going to go in for, a player that I've looked at for quite a long while, is Dario Asugio. Now, immediately they asked for Simo. I thought, no way. Uh, you're taking him, Ruben Amarin. But I saw Domingo Valencia here. Now, Valencia came through our youth system. And I thought, you know what? For that striker to go and play at Sporting Lisbon would be fantastic. What about a straight swap for Asugio? Now, obviously, that works more in Sporting's favour, they think. But it doesn't quite. Because what we can do is sell Asugio for profit and perhaps bring Domingo Valencia back in the future. Because we know what high-quality young player he is. Uh, and he's just not ready for the first team. He didn't go and play first team football at Sporting. Asugio is also a very high quality young player. And at 21 years of age, I do think he can become 
uh, perhaps a holding midfielder for the future in this team. I don't think he's far off being uh, a first team player in the future. 74 rated at 21 with the Portuguese. But he's going to be the second sign. And these are just the CFG signs that we're doing. Firstly, get them into the team. And then it is about bringing in the bigger name players, the players that we want to transform this team. There's a few areas of the side that I do want to improve. So there he is, Dario Sugio, straight sort of Domingo Valencia. We're going to get a very low rating, an F, because obviously we've offered a player worth way more in that deal. But we don't want, we, we want to sort of decide what Valencia does. Another player I've picked out here is Desiree Adoué. We've agreed a deal for the Frenchman who's playing in Portugal. He's moved from, I think it was then, he played for 21 years of age, 76 rated. This one is a bit of an exciting one to me. I do think this young player has a lot to offer, a lot to offer. There's something about him that really excites me, and that is why we aim to bring him in, and we managed to bring him in. Contract agreed with young Frenchman Desiree Due, and that is going to be an A. It was a swap deal. Iago Mosquera from our youth system, who has been out on loan, has developed plus 8.5, which is a lot of money, but we still get an A. So we're talking about a player here with incredibly high potential. A player that is probably worth, what, what 15 was the best possible deal. We're talking 16 million, 18 million plus. Alfie Adams has joined Sassuolo in Italy on a 12-month loan. And James Trafford has moved to Getafe. On a 12-month loan, so two goalkeepers, two young goalkeepers there going developing. Uh, Julio Costa has joined Ghent on a two-year loan deal, another player through our youth system. And Desiree Due has agreed a deal to a West Ham side in the Premier League. Now, we saw Maximo Perone de developed over there, so now we see him go there. And then we're looking at sort of other players to bring in. We don't really have a right-back for the future. We have Rico Lewis, but then we've got Joao Cantel and no real players out on loan. You see at left-back, we've got a few players, perhaps, and we've got, like, Millian Manhoff out on loan. We've got centre-backs there to look at in Scalvini. We've got also a young left back here in Caleb Wiley now one of our objectives I do believe is to sign a player from North America and you can see that that is why we're looking at signing Americans and that is why we're going to go in for Caleb Wiley because it is one of the objectives that we have to complete so Caleb Wiley worth 3.5 and again we could look to offer one of our players in a swap deal and see who is there for the taking obviously it's not so hard to find players Felix Fagner there uh, Daniel Martins, Lewis Lambert, the sort of players that we've brought through our youth system, but I'm impressed with them. There's no one that we can really offer, is there, in this deal, looking at it. Ronnie Edwards, perhaps. He's not one that we've really had an impact made by him, Ronnie Edwards. They're going to say 2 point something million for Caleb Wiley. 2 million, 2.75, 21% selling clause is big. That is big. But if you take the selling clause out, they'll want a bit more money. Is there anyone we can offer in this deal? Obviously, we won't be offering some of these bigger players or any of the players we've just signed either. And I don't think there's anyone there, is there? Julian Alvarez, the only striker we have at the club at the moment. That is another area that I think we need to try and, you know, really identify as bringing a sign. What about 3 million for Caleb Wiley? 21 years of age, 71 rated, but he's certainly one we can sell for profit in the future. One that could come and play for Manchester City. And they're driving a hard bargain here. A really hard bargain at Atlanta. I think 3 million plus 15% sell-on clause. Maybe 2. 2.8. They agree that. 2.8 sell-on clause for Atalanta United there. And then we went to negotiate the deals with Caleb Wiley. And get him on a contract. And again, like Simo, try to loan him out for the rest of the season. If we can do, Caleb Wiley joins Manchester City. A young American left back. Maybe in the, the sort of mould of Anthony Robinson who plays at Fulham. Who's really developed at Fulham, hasn't he? And we're going to get an A rating again for Caleb Wiley. So another player that we leave in the club on loan if we get the offers in. Another player we look to develop while using the loan system and the City Football Group. And there we have it. Simo has joined Celta Vigo on a two-year loan. He leaves the club. And then also another move away from the club is David Gold from the new system. He joins Crystal Palace for two years in the Premier League. So we received an offer here for John Stones from RB Leipzig. He's worth around 50 million now. John Stones, 32 years of age. We do think this is probably time for him to go from Manchester City now. That is in my mind. Now, we are looking at new players and we're looking to add a lot of things to the squad. We want the squad to be more athletic. And one thing we are missing is perhaps a backup to Julian Alvarez or someone who can battle with Julian Alvarez. And the man I think I'm going to pick out, because in career mode he still plays for RB Leipzig is Don Calvo Ramos. Now, you can see here Benjamin Sesko is also on my list. It's between those two. I could bring back Liam Delap, but he is more for the future. We'll continue scouting him. Ramos, 25 years of age. Sesko, 23 years of age. Sesko, 83. Ramos, 85. Delap, only 77 still, I think. Playing at Augsburg in the Bundesliga. 
And Ramos, athleticism-wise, outdoors Sesco. I mean, we've got Haaland there, one of our ex-players. We've got technical ability. He is the same, but he's got better... One less shooting, but better passing. And that better passing does stick out to me. I mean, look at those stats physically. He's everything we don't really have in a striker already. I think a big, strong hold-up man, which Maurizio Pochettino would like in his Manchester City side. And I think we're going to go into this offer and see if they would take John Stones in the deal. Now, we do have Vinter on loan at RB Leipzig, but we also have, as well, Matteo Ramirez, 19 years of age, 83 rated. I am half thinking we're recalling from his loan and offering that Goncalo Ramos deal. Then he wouldn't cost us hardly any money at all. But I'm not going to do that for now. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to make the offer with John Stones and then perhaps Matteo Ramirez. Then we can discuss that deal with him, perhaps him going in that deal. Let's go in for... Goncalo Ramos, hero of the World Cup in Portugal for a while, did score a hat-trick. And I want to sign this grey mode because of the player he is, what he suits Manchester City and suits what we want. A backup striker because we've only got one real striker. And also he's at RB Leipzig, it seems like a realistic sign for City in this in his career mode, in this career mode, and in his career, plays for RB Leipzig and, and not anyone else. We've got a good relationship with RB Leipzig. They are interested in John Stones. So we're going to say, well, would you like John Stones? And they say, yes, we would like John Stones, but plus 32 million for the player. And that already is pretty good. Now, of course, you can see there, Pep Guardiola is still negotiating. I can't change that, unfortunately. I wish I could change it so it was uh, Pochettino or uh, someone sporting direct negotiating, but it's still Pep Guardiola. I can't change it. 20.3 million. Let's get it down to 20. 20 million plus John Stones for Goncalo Ramos. 20.9. You've got me there. It looks like we could agree a deal for the Portuguese international to come to Manchester City and be that backup to Julian Alvarez and that big hold-up man. I think he'll shine in that position. Ooh, rotation. Will he accept that? He's happy with that. He's happy with that. A five-year deal will take us until he's 30 years of age. Goncalo Ramos also happy with that. No release clause. He wants some extras here. We'll go up to 125,000 per week, down to a 1 million signing bonus for the Portuguese. 25 years of age, a big, strong hold-up man will sort of offer that contrast to what Julian Alvarez can offer to the side up top this season. Goncalo Ramos, welcome to Manchester City. Pep Guardiola still at the club in terms of being maybe our sporting director, Pep Guardiola. Maybe he sticks around to do that. He wants to do a boardroom level thing for Manchester City. That sounds sort of realistic. So here is Ramos arriving at Manchester City, Portuguese international. Plenty of Portuguese players have played for City over the years. Uh, and João Cancelo, Ruben Diaz still here. Diaz, captain of the Portuguese national side. And uh, we mustn't forget as well that uh, our relationship with the Bundesliga and especially RB Leipzig. And there uh, is Goncalo Ramos warming up. Getting his medical done. Ready to be a Manchester City player. He's ready. Number 17. I don't think he'll wear that number. I think he'll wear the number 18. Well, Ramos. There is Ramos. On the big screen with Mauricio Pochettino, of course. Maybe I could edit this in the outtakes and uh, you will see something different on the screen. I don't know. Maybe I've done that by the time you guys are watching. 20.9 million plus John Stones. So Stones leaves the club after a long time, goes and plays the Bundesliga. An A rating for that signing. Excellent deal to get him for that 21 million. 86. He's got up to 86 rated. Wow, he's actually higher rating than Julian Alvarez now. There you are. Best possible deal was 58.2 million. The player value is 52 million. And we got it for 20.9. Also, something to mention is well, actually Alvaro is 86. Ramos is 85. He did say he was 86 then. I I've got to say thank you to John Stones. Everything he's done for Manchester City. He's been absolutely brilliant. It's just his time to move on now. At 32 years of age. Um, Mauricio Pochettino wants a more athletic squad. A more, you know, strong, fast squad. Mama Lakanji offers that more than John Stones. And let's just have a look at these two. So, Ramos is a year younger. He's got a bit better pace. Nowhere near as good shooting or passing as Julian Alvarez. The same dribbling. Also, better defending and much, much better physical. And that's what I'm saying. Maurizio Pochettino wants to create a more physical side. More athletic, more physical. Guardiola's very much passing. This time, we're going to be more physical in the team and more more pace, more energy, more attacking football in that sense, in that way, rather than just passing around the teams. We are going to develop as a team under Maurizio Pochettino. And Goncalo Ramos is the first signing for Pochettino and shows, doesn't it, 
the way we're going, a 90 physical player. That shows a 91 pace, physical and pace. That's what we added to the side. Well, like always, we're going to simulate through pre-season. Not a great start, by the way. A 2-0 defeat in the opening game against Bayer Leverkusen. Injury for Josh Wilson, Esbram, which is not good. Kenya and Enrique with the goals. Well, bad news for Esbram. He's going to miss the first three months of the season. A broken ankle injury. Now, Esbram in real life, of course, is injury prone. And we've seen that here. Three months out. Born our soul is going to play a lot of football then. And a player who's come through our youth system, Daniel Martins, joins FC Andorra on a two-year loan, developing the Portuguese player over time. Ronnie Edwards joins the Swallow on a 12-month loan with agreement to sign him for £5 million at the end of that loan, if that is possible. One of the pre-season game, this time against Real Betis, and a 2-1 win. Goal for Silas for them, but it's Phil Foden and Savvy on the score sheet to get us to 2-1 win. We are looking to add athleticism to this side, and especially in the midfield. If you think of our midfield options, we've got Rodri and Phillips both very slow. We've got Frankie de Jong and Maximo Perón, both, again, no pace. And we want to add more like athleticism attacking play. And two players that look to be the, the men that are going to transform fully this Maurizio Pochettino Manchester City is Kawadu Manu Kone from Villarreal and Jacob Ramsey. Now, we want to develop, like we've said, English players and concentrate on English players and also young players. Now, look at this. These players, all green stats for both of them. All green stats. Now, Rodri of Manchester City, he wants to play back in Spain. Now, we've seen Pep Guardiola leave. He's had many years, nearly 10 years at Manchester City, but he wants to return to Spain without Pep Guardiola around at Manchester City, which is fine. And I think we're going to try and offer Rodri in this deal to return to one of his former sides, Villarreal, who are top side now, in exchange for Cowardu Kone. And I mean, just look at this man's stats, by the way. His pace is good. His strength, his stamina, his reactions is very, very good. His composure, his vision is unbelievable as well. Great ball control, great dribbling, shot power. The only stats he's low on is defensive awareness, free kick accuracy, volleys and penalties. And we intend to make this man a holding midfielder to take over from Rodri and battle with Calvin Phillips for that defensive midfield role. And like I said, athleticism is one thing we're missing in this side. Pochettino is planning to add it. And this man looks to be the man to replace Rodri to do it. Let's see if we can negotiate this deal. So Rodri wants to return to Spain. Unai Emery still in charge of uh, Villarreal as well in this save. Rodri wants to go to back to Villarreal. And it's agreed straight away. It suits both clubs perfectly. Bye for now. So Rodri wants to return to Spain. Rodri looks to return to Villarreal. Now that Pep Guardiola is no longer Manchester City manager. And a straight swap for Kaidu Kone. Who's got, by the way, 184 million release clause. Let's negotiate this. Well, Rodri 30... Kalidou Kone, five years younger. This could be a massive signing for Manchester City. Important first team player, agreed. Got to get him on a five year deal. A real face as well, blue dreads. I mean, the guy's going to look incredible in game. No release clause for the Frenchman. Let's just negotiate this. Offer him 135,000 per week. A massive bonus on top of what he's got. 1.25 million as well, signing bonus. I mean, he's nearly more than doubled his wages there, Kone. And he is coming to Manchester City. That is probably the, one of my most exciting signs of this uh, transfer season so far, especially in the whole of career mode. This guy just looks so, so good. I think he's going to be incredible in-game. First to departure, Felix Wagner is moving. He goes to Mallorca on a two-year loan deal. I think that'll be good for him. He's got something about him when I looked at his stats. He's got something about him really has and there is Kaidu Kone Rodri leaves Manchester City Kone comes in surely this is an 8 it's a D a decent buy a decent buy to let go of a 90 rated Rodri 86 rated Kone but look at that 77 pace 77 shooting 85 passing 88 dribbling 74 defending which we're going to improve on and 77 physical as well what a class player not good enough apparently don't listen to the board there they're talking rubbish another youth player Luis Lambert joins a Portuguese side of Paria on a two-year loan, looking to develop into a centre-back over time. Sevilla next in pre-season, a 2-0 win. Goals from Goncalo Ramos and Maximo Perón. Leaving the club is new sign Dario Sugo. He goes to the Bundesliga, two-year loan at Borussia Mönchengladbach. I think he could come back a real top-quality player. And also, Caleb Wiley, the American who joined in this summer transfer window, joined Stad René, or Stad Rem, on a two-year loan. And the final player to move to Manchester City, or hoping to make the move in the Manchester City of this Pochettino era, on this season anyway, three big signs, Ramos, Kone, the final one looks to be Jacob Ramsey, really changed the midfield, I mean look at this guy's stats, like Kone is just, just unbelievable, free kick heading, 
volleys and penalties, everything else, the guy is absolutely incredible. Wonderful long shots, great pace, brilliant player on the ball. Only 25 years, English player. Let's see if we can get a really good deal for him. We go straight in with his value of 50 million. They want Kone. Well, we've just signed Kone for the reason we're not going to sell him. Let's try again. I think it's Atalanta, isn't it? Bergamo Calcio. 50 million. 70 million. I expect him to cost around that. But it's down to 60, perhaps, for Jacob Ramsey. We'll say yes to that. Ramsey joins with 60 million, it seems. Well, I thought we negotiated that pretty well, to be fair. Maybe we could have got it lower to around 55. 60 million spent on him. 20 on Ramos. A free signing of Kone and the swap with Rodri. Rotation. We'll accept that. Then he doesn't get too ahead of himself on how many games he should be playing. Again, a five-year deal to take him to 30, similar to Kone. No release clause. That's easily accepted. He wants 135,000 per week. A big bonus there for 20 appearances. But he doesn't need it. Jacob Ramsey's joining Manchester City as well. Ex-Villa man. Similar to the Grealish transfer in the way. Top player. I mean, his stats look unbelievable. So Ramsey at Manchester City. Virgin World Council, 60 million for the player. That is like a regular sum for a Manchester City sign, isn't it? And they give us a B rating, not quite an A. It could have been an A, I think, if we'd got him to around 55 million. Apparently, we could have got him for 55. We paid 60, a little bit over, but look at those stats. 78 pace, 82 shooting, 80 passing, 88 dribbling. 78 defending, 82 physical. He's actually got better defending than Kone, but I won't play him all the midfield. But I think him and Kone could perform a really good partnership together. Of course, don't forget the quality we have already in Frankie de Jong as well. So, first proper game of the series now, and it is against... Paris Saint-Germain winners the Europa League in the UEFA Super Cup final, which we did win last season against the Europa League winners Real Madrid. Seems to always be a big team. You get knocked out of the Champions League at the moment in this grey mode and go into the Europa League and go ahead and win it. Now, we've got a couple of tired legs, meaning that Frankie de Jong and Dominic Sobosly and Jack Grealish miss out today. Grealish did say he wanted to play this game, actually, but I'm not going to risk him being tired. He's going to be in for the start of the Premier League season. This is the side we're going to go with. Mike Magnan starts to go. It's Cancelo at the right wing spot. And this is the formation we're going to go with. Cancelo at the right wing spot with Akanji, Guardaval and Sosa at the left wing back spot. In the midfield is the two new midfielders who start together in an important game. First time together. It is Kone and Ramsey. Kone minus four is a holding midfielder. Hopefully that can change over time. Phil Foden, the captain for this season in the attacking midfield role with Musa Diaby on the right hand side. Cole Palmer today on the left in that sort of Roll where I want him to drift inside. It would be where Soboslai or Grealish play. Both being tied means Palmer is the main choice for that role. And up top is Julian Alvarez playing as an out-and-out -out striker. The bench, Goncalo Ramos, new signing. Kaiki, Perón, Phillips, Luis, Diaz and Rulli. And if you look, this is the squad we're going to go with for the whole season. 26-man squad. Phillips is the extra man. Hopefully he can get some game time. He is 21 years of age, 6 foot 3. Got everything you want in a centre-back and everything Pochettino wants in a centre-back, I think, for the future. He's going to get his game time. His chances like Mbete, Esbrand and Lewis got. Now, with Esbrand out for three months, we don't really have another left-back other than Sosa. We know Cancelo can play there. Also, Maximo Perón, left-footed, perhaps might be able to play there. But maybe we put Mbete and play more of a defensive back three at times. Uh, the, the loss of Esbrand is quite a big one in pre-season because I did expect big things from him in this Pochettino side. So you're for Super Cup final. Outcome of two sides, captained by Prince Elkin Pembe, the man from Paris, and Phil Foden for Manchester City. Donnarumma there as well. I expect a, a strong PSG side here today. Kylian Mbappe still up top. Mikel Oyarzabal in there, as well as Pierre-Emerick Hoybierg. They've got Marquinhos Mukiele. I'm interested to see their side. It's going to be a strong PSG side, but a strong Manchester City side as well. Not the first team he perhaps would have gone with after a couple of tired legs, but still a strong side. Bastione at the back alongside Marquinhos and Kimpembe. That's a brilliant team, is it, from PSG? I don't know how they ended up in the Europa League last year. Well, Maurizio Pochettino is named his first ever Manchester City starting 11 in a big game. A cup final for Pochettino, which people might say is his weak spot. He does, you know, one of the bottlers, they'd say, like Spurs, but... He's going to show something different here at Manchester City, I'm sure, over the next few seasons, if not more. And there is the PSG side. Let's see what side there you go with. Donnarumma starts in goal. It is a back four of Bastione, Marquinhos, Kimpembe, Mukiele and Sanchez. They've got a midfield two of Hoybierg and Enzo Fernandez. Then it is Mbappe, Volmark and Oyarzabal, the front three. On the bench, Livakovic, Hakimi, Rice, Scala, Olmo, Chiesa. And another one as well, but Danny Olmo returns to face his former team left. 
Only six months before in the January transfer window, £120 million move to PSG. And he's not even the starting eleven. Of course, Pochettino knows PSG as well. He's faced them. He's managed them before. So PSG have worked it well so far. So he's got to be careful throwing his foot out like that. Cross comes in here. Mainyan with a great save. City struggling here in the first few minutes. A worrying start to this game from Manchester City. They lay it off short. Chance from range and another really good reaction save from Mike Mainyan. He's been called into action two or three times now at the start of this game. Guardo all the way again. City starts grappling. Fold him. Why to call Palmer? City on the counter here. Palmer. Palmer into Diaby with a good chance and great defending from Bastione. Here is Kone. Oh, lovely run. Kone to the far post to Diaby. Bastione away, fold in there. Ramsey in there, down to Sanchez. Palmer, he's got a goal in his locker as well. Kone. Back out to Palmer. Sosa. To the far post to Musa Diaby, 1 0 City. Well, that's a great goal and it shows the fullbacks causing problems and that's what is going to happen this season. Pochettino really holding in on those fullbacks. Borna Sosa, one of the best in the world. Great cross into the Arby. Sanchez loses him. He's worried about the attacking fullback and Cancelo. But the Arby gets in the box and gets his first goal of the season. He scored how many last season, the Arby? I think I have it written down here. 28 last season and 23 assists. Unbelievable record, isn't it? First goal of the season, he scored by Moussa Diaby. Out to Cancelo. City have got to play out of difficult areas here. Pressing from PSG is relentless. Cancelo. Diaby's onside here. Moussa Diaby. Diaby, good skill. Oh, and just as he went to get the shot off. Good tackle. City pressing. Got a rummer. Ooh, under pressure here. Unlucky. Palmer get up. Palmer does get up. Down to... Sosa. Palmer away from Mookie LA. Palmer, another cross to the back post to Diaby again. This time he can't direct into the back of the net. But good cross by Palmer. Alvarez can't cut that one out. Kimpembe. Ramsey, good interception. Fold him. Into Diaby. Diaby! 2 0 Manchester City. In a goal for Moussa Diaby. He's double. 43rd minute. Good goal by Moussa Diaby. Well, the Pochettino area of Manchester City is well underway. And he's beaten his former side, PSG. Good finish by Diaby. So easy. 2 0. Great play. Sosa. Palmer. Alvarez. Alvarez! 3 0 Manchester City. Oh, he's offside, Olian. Great find by Cole Palmer. Could be 3 0. Look, LA is off. He's an all action midfielder, really. He's doing pretty well. Diaby to Alvarez. Beat Marquinhos to it into Cole Palmer. Good defending by Marquinhos and away by PSG again. To Kaiki. Back to Rico Lewis. Phillips. Kaiki. Ramsey. Kaiki. Phillips. Lewis. Cool power in there and tipped over the bar by Donnarumma. Ramsey turns brilliant and away into Kaiki. Into Rico Lewis. Back to Kaiki. Might fall to Phil Foden. Good save. Kaiki on the rebound. It's in the back of the net. Well, this man does not does not miss Kaiki. 3 0 Manchester City in the Super Cup final. Well, we are going to make some changes, by the way. Maximo Peron for Sosa. We'll try him at left back because we need we need that left back. And a great goal by Kaiki here. Off the post and in. What a finish. What an unbelievable finish by Kaiki. Sosa off of Maximo Peron. We'll be trialled at left back now. Palmer up against Bastione. He's done well. Still Palmer. Into Maximo Perone, he's found him. Perone, Kaiki at the far post. Ramos missed it. Kaiki scores his second of the game. He is going to be so important this season. 4 0 City against PSG. 
Ramos missed it. Kaiki didn't. 4 0 against PSG in the Super Cup final. Well, Pochettino City start the season. And start life under the new, new manager brilliantly. Ramos battling. Back to Mainyan. It goes in his net, but it doesn't matter. Manchester City 4, PSG 0. Well, PSG were in the Europa League last season. Perhaps that is why they're not the right quality. Guardiola celebrates, of course. Once you pick the actual manager, you can't then, you know, usually you can edit the manager to look a different way. You can't, unfortunately, once you pick the manager. Swap step the players now. Maximo Perón, though, coming at left back and done a good job. His passing ability will make a big plus at left back. And our new captain taking over from Kevin De Bruyne this season. Not Ruben Diaz. It will be Phil Foden, the number 47. With two hands on that UEFA Super Cup, Pochettino, one game in charge of Manchester City and one trophy. City UEFA Super Cup winners. So guys, to make this career a little bit difficult since we've just destroyed our records in the last few seasons, we are going to not make us worse. I know some people sometimes in career obviously make their players worse. I don't want to do that with sliders. I do not want to make our players worse. Keep them the level they are. I'll make the opposition better. That's what I'm aiming to do. So I'm going to give them 52 and 52 sprint speed and acceleration. Maybe 50. Yeah, that, that'll do. 52 and 52. So a little bit faster. But I'm going to drop the shot error down by 5. The pass error massively down to 35. So a lot better in that regard. And the goalkeeper ability up to 65. I hope that does help the opposition to be a bit more challenging to play against. And of course, we can still change that if we destroy teams in every game. So first game of the Premier League season, the final game of today's episode. Manchester City take on Liverpool. This is the side we're going to start with. Mainyan in goal, Cancelo, Akanji, Guadabal and Sosa the back four. It is Phillips and Frankie de Jong in the midfield too with captain Phil Foden in front, the RB on the right, Dominic Sovic lie on the left and Julian Alvarez through the middle. On the bench we've got Goncalo Ramos, Grealish, Kaiki, Kone, Luis, Diaz and really no Mbete, no Phillips, no Perón, Palmer, Savio or Ramdi today and no... Joshua Snesbrand, who's already decreased down to 77. That is worrying for his development. Well, if I didn't reveal who the first team we face at the start of the Premier League season is, it is our toughest test of the season, perhaps. At the start of the season, we go away to Anfield to face Liverpool. Klopp takes on a new manager in Maurizio Pochettino at Manchester City. But City continue to develop as a club. We've continued to bring in young players and loan them out for the future. This side is on the right route, and this side is ready to win more trophies over the next few seasons. City versus Liverpool, Premier League fixture match day one. Let's see what they are in a test for us this season. For a reason, the team she didn't come on to Mendy. Player debut for him in the middle. Savage Light, Frankie. Savage Light. To Phil Foden, 1 0 City. Captain with the goal. Assist for Savage Light. Well, he's our Kevin De Bruyne replacement. De Bruyne left the club on a free transfer. The end of his contract alongside Pep Guardiola. Sobberschlei is there instead and City are already doing the pause at the Anfield. What a start that is. Allison couldn't save that one. Well, we've made the opposition more difficult to beat. We've taken the lead immediately. It's just a pure, <laughs> just purely bad defending by Liverpool here. Yeah. Norris has got to get tight as a Foden. And even so, I mean, Allison should maybe do better. It's a wonderful finish by Phil Foden. The first goal of the Pochettino Premier League era. Scored by his captain, Phil Foden. Ooh, it's accurate. It's, it's ambitious. Cancelo, Phillips. Sosa. Frankie. Sosa. Alvarez. 2 0 City. What a goal. What a goal by City. I think the football might even go to another level this season. 2 0 City goal for Julian Alvarez. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Back heel by Frankie de Jong through to Sosa. Pulls it back to Julian. One touch in the finish in the side netting. We've made Liverpool better. We haven't made us worse, which we're not going to. 15 minutes in, we lead by two goals to the landfield. We're just too good at the moment. Brilliant from De Jong. So much light. Well through to Sosa. He's wonderful again. Sosa. The Army at the front post. Good save by Alisson. Good save by Alisson to stop us scoring there. So much light. Frankie. De Jong. Got two to deal with here, Trent. He's lost them both. So much light. Foden. That is just unbelievable football. 3 0 at Anfield. That is just unbelievable football. Absolutely crazy. 
absolutely crazy quality there. What a goal. What a goal. What a goal. It's unbelievable. 3 0. What a goal, guys. Right in the stroke of half time. Oh, my yeah. Brave. Quality. Savage light. Bad pass by Alvarez. Falling behind here. Chance for Liverpool. Magnan. Good reaction save. 62nd minute. We're going to get Julian off. He's not going to get his hat trick today. Ramos going to come on. Luis Diaz against Cancelo. He's dropped Cancelo. Oh, good ball in behind here. Kanji stopped the cross initially. Go out of all good defending into a Kanji. Kaiki. Great play by Kaiki. City play out and counter now. Kaiki to Ramos. Oh, he beat him. And then to Kaiki. What a ball. Kaiki. Good defending by Adam Elite out. To the edge of the box to Frankie de Jong. Phil Foden. Foden, Ramos. Allison out to tackle him. Rico Lewis across. Luis Diaz. Chance say by Mañan and he drops on it. And that is full time. We end our first episode with a Super Cup final win. And a win at Anfield 3-0 against Liverpool. Maurizio Pochettino's Manchester City. Ignore that man there on the screen. Have been absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. A new era is coming at Manchester City. And it started absolutely unbelievably. We'll see you guys next time.